Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our WNCT Now Late Afternoon News Update. I'm Kelsey O'Donnell, broadcasting to you live today from inside the digital studio. If this is your first time ever joining us, welcome in. This is the time and place where we get to broadcast you guys some of the top news headlines for today in between our newscasts. Now, that being said, we are following a developing story. House and Senate leaders are working on plans for President Trump's second impeachment trial, which could begin an hour after President-elect Biden's inauguration. Yesterday, Donald Trump became the first president to be impeached twice. That came on a 232 to 197 vote, with the U.S. House passing an article charging him with incitement of insurrection. It happened exactly one week after Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in deadly riots. Ten Republicans broke from the president party to vote yes to the impeachment charge. Lawmakers say the trial could begin at 1 p.m. Wednesday, one hour after Joe Biden is sworn in as president. A conviction in the Senate would keep President Trump from running for federal office again. Officials are preparing for armed protests at state capitol buildings as we speak across the country. This comes ahead of next week's presidential inauguration. The FBI issued the warning about the threat of violence at capitol buildings. In North Carolina, Governor Roy Cooper is calling on National Guard troops to assist security in Raleigh and Washington, D.C. 200 Guard members are heading to the nation's capital after requests from federal authorities. Cooper is also deploying 350 National Guard soldiers to Raleigh to support state and local authorities in case of armed protests in the coming days. The D.C. force will back up local police and federal agents, providing security before, during, and after Wednesday's press presidential inauguration. Ahead, we'll take a look at the most up-to-date COVID numbers across the state of North Carolina, and I'll tell you how the vaccine could affect you if you're 65 years of age or older. Stay with us. Episodes of Nine in Your Side Sports Talk Wednesdays on WNCT.com. All right, quick break. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Kelsey O'Donnell. If you're just now joining us, this is the time and place where we get to break down some of the latest top news headlines right here on our WNCT Now platform. Like we mentioned before the break, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the updated numbers of COVID-19 across the state of North Carolina. Health officials say technical issues with their coronavirus dashboard related to low resulted in lower numbers on Wednesday and higher totals, which you see up here today. They're reporting nearly 10,000 new cases of COVID in our state. Now, the rate of tests coming back positive is 11.1 percent. Nearly 4,000 people are receiving COVID treatment in the state's hospitals, and there are 80 new deaths, bringing the total to more than 7,800 since the virus first began. Speaking of COVID, we're following a developing story out of Raleigh on vaccinations. Governor Cooper says people 65 and older will now be able to get the vaccine. The state is currently in the phase where people 75 and older are receiving shots. North Carolina health leaders are working with medical systems, departments, and community centers across the state to host large vaccine events for people currently eligible for vaccination. More than 45,000 doses are expected to be given through these events. Partners were selected based on availability to administer large amounts of vaccine. And here in the East, vaccine events will be held in Bertie and Pitt counties. For a full list of those locations, visit our website at WNCT.com. In our afternoon crime tracker, Greenville police tell us that one woman is dead and her three-year-old son is injured following a shooting Wednesday night. Pitt County deputies got a call to a home near Charles Boulevard and East Fire Tower Road around 9.30 last night. They found 20-year-old Marshavia Paisley unresponsive. She was later pronounced dead. Pais Paisley's three-year-old son was also hit, and he is being treated at Vidant Medical Center. Anyone with information is asked to call the Pitt-Greenville Crime Stoppers. 
Again, please call the Pitt Greenville Crime Stoppers if you do have any information regarding this situation. That number is listed online at WNCT.com on our homepage, as well as everything else, more information regarding any of the topics that I did speak about today. WNCT.com, the latest information and everything you need to know. That will do it for our late afternoon news update. I'm Kelsey O'Donnell right here in the digital studio. Be sure to stick around for our newscast coming up this afternoon at 5. Thanks for watching.